I greet the beloved church and you who visit us with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We're going to open up our Bibles in the book of Judges. Uh, reading. Judges 6, verse 11 and 12. The Lord has prepared great blessings for us tonight. A few have been poured out by faith we believe through the pleading, through the praises, through the song that has been uh, was sang by the children, through the revelation. I believe that the Lord has performed cures, deliverances, salvation. There is much more that the Lord wants to do still in the service. So believe. Open up your heart and give a place to the Holy Spirit because He will continue to do His acts of justice amongst us. The text that we are going to read says the following. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terabith tree which was in Opar, which belonged to Josh, Joash the Abiyaz right, right while his son Gideon trashed wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of God. I will repeat, Then the Lord the Lord is with you, you mighty man of God uh, of valor. In the same fellowship we're gonna hear a song that we're going to be sang.
I love this. This is the God that we serve. The God whose actions of justice, as we have said, they don't work based on the human logic. The God's logic grows and to whom uh, who humiliates the logic of eternity is exalted, who uh, humbles himself. And the text that we read speaks of someone that was in agreement with the desires of the heart of the Lord. A man called Gideon. And that tonight, in the meditation of the word, with the motto, the spirit of the Lord, uh, told us for us to use in order for you to be able to reach the purpose of the Lord for your life in the time of Gideon because of the hardening of the heart of the sons of Israel because they had done what was evil to uh, the eyes of the Lord they were upon a judgment a judgment came upon them it was the, the prosecution from the part of the enemy that would steal their uh, food the Midianites they planted, they harvested when when they were going to uh, work on the wheat separate and put in the barn the Midianite would come during the night and would steal all the grain and it began to bring famine and sadness and shame because there's nothing more sad than a people, a nation, not having the means to protect their own their own uh, possessions. They were not able to protect their own uh, livelihood. And my brother, the people began to uh, be desperate. And we see that in this passage, when we see the aspect of the trashing floor. It is a detail that is very interesting that says that in the word of the Lord, when the Lord wants to refer to the coming of this Son and the establishment of the project of salvation for the life of man, the Lord speaks of it, of, of cleaning up the threshing floor because it is time for the harvest. When it's, kind, it's time for the harvest, uh, they are going to uh, um, the harvest is going to be performed the, the wheat will be placed in a barn and, and the shaft will be thrown away or it's going to be burned and that's, that's just, uh, one of the spiritual gifts that was given during the, the uh, before the service the, that the threshing floor was going to be claimed I want to tell you my brother you have to pay, pay attention to what is going on in the world generally speaking we're not speaking about America when I was speaking about Europe or Asia, the entire world, the signs, the wonders, the rumors of war, everything points out to the cleaning up of the threshing floor because the time of uh, the harvest is near, because the time of the coming of the Lord Jesus is near. And uh, in the midst of this preparation for the harvest, there is a great enemy that is being going against humanity. This is a fact. It's public and notorious. The enemy, the enemy of our souls, has creating great problems throughout the earth. Uh, moral um, um, devastation. The enemy of our soul wants uh, to make what is right to look wrong and what is wrong to look right have you ever thought to think about that everything that is good everything that is has good reputation everything that is, is a good principle the enemy has tried to make it look like shameful something that is uh, outdated and everything that we know that according to the word is called uh, terrible to the Lord is even uh, be considered as art. It is the strategy of the of the evil to steal the harvest. The, the, the food is the word of the Lord. 
the living bread that came from heaven is Jesus. The enemy came to steal, to, to kill, and destroy. <coughs> And uh, that's what happened to the, the children of Israel because they walked in, in evil ways, they suffered this. And the world without Jesus, because they walk in evil ways, because they do things that sadden the Lord, there's a price that's been paid. There's been an absence of Jesus in man's heart that causes them not to give worth to the life or the principles or not giving any worth to the family or anything else. Everything is stolen. Peace is stolen. Joy is removed. The harmony is uh, destroyed. And the greatest objective is to kill. To kill the soul. Much more than killing the, the body. The massacres are out there. Uh, throughout the face of the world. And don't be deceived. The objective the, of the Midianites was not only to have a uh, a barn uh, fuller than the uh, Israelites. The objective was to have to see the Jewish people killed and dying of hunger. That's the objective of any of our souls today. They are not worried about this physical body. They are concerned with the death of the soul. And if they are able to destroy the body whose life does, has no assurance of salvation, then he was able to achieve his objective. But there, there was in the past, uh, there is and there will always be a group that is always faithful. The Lord has always uh, trusted on this small group that is faithful. And Gideon was part of this group. And Gideon did what, according to me, human eyes, was something that was uh, could be criticized. It was uh, the right, it was to be, to part do the harvest bringing the, the wheat and putting on the threshing floor, separating the chef from the, the wheat, the chef was going to be burnt, and then you have the the grains. But that's the moment in which the Minnites were stealing the grain. So then Gideon had a revelation from God. And that's what revelation is. It's the opposite to the idea. The idea is futile, it, it passes by, but when revelation generates life, and Gina had a revelation, he brought the, the wheat and brought to another place that was not common. He brought it to the wine press. The wine press was a stone in which they, they made a hole. It was like a, a recipient with a hole. It was a place where you, you would uh, press the wine, the, the, the grapes to produce wine. But he had a revelation that if he worked the wheat at the bottom of the wine press, the enemy would not, the enemy would not steal it, and the victory came. While he was uh, working the wheat inside uh, the bottom of the wine press, the enemy had no success. Who would imagine that the wheat would be worked on a place that was not proper for wheat? It was proper for grapes. And exactly in this revelation, that Gideon was able to reach victory. My brethren, the threshing floor is a common place, a plain place made of of uh, dirt, uh, stomped dirt. So the pro the work of uh, working the wheat would be easy. But what Gideon did, he did it on a place much harder. It was much harder. The difficulty uh, of this work was much greater because, as opposed to the through the threshing floor which was plain the the wine press was a hole was much harder for him it, it involved much more dedication and it was much harder for him to work the wheat in the threshing floor than in the in, in the wine press than in the thresh floor if you analyze the grain if the grain was worked on on the threshing floor and compare the, the grain with the grain that was worked on inside of the wine press, the first would have the smell of of, of uh, the earth, and the the way that was worked on inside of the wine press, you if you smell it, you would you clearly would smell the smell of the grapes because the place, even if there was no grapes there, 
there there was a residue of grapes that had been uh, worked on there. So in this story that we just heard, there's a revelation that we need to understand in order to be able to reach God's heart. So when the wheat is worked on, on the threshing floor, it speaks of a gospel for this life, a gospel that is tastes like the dirt, that has characteristics characteristics of the earth and it reminds us of the things of this earth and the wheat that is worked on is at the bottom of the wine press it speaks of, uh, it speaks of a word that goes beyond the letter it speaks of a, a food that extracted in the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus that's what the wine press sp speaks of it speaks of uh, bringing us back to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ in the cross of Calvary when Jesus went to Calvary, when he gave his life, he, and he gave himself up to save you and I, and his blood was shed, he gave his life and allowed his blood to leave his body in order to give us salvation, because in, in the blood is a representation of the Holy Spirit of the Lord that gives us life. So, when we feed off of a word that was worked on inside of the wine press, we are feeding off of the word that goes beyond the letter, because the Bible says that the letter kills, but the spirit vivifies and in the moment and Gideon did that according to human eyes everything was wrong I heard particularly a few preachings from other denominations in which they call Gideon a coward Gideon was a coward because he was running away instead of working the way on the threshing floor which was the right place they, he was running away because he was working the way in the wine press <coughs> this is what uh, the type of uh, message that w was worked on the threshing floor because uh, much on the contrary he was working during the night there was a risk of him of being found and uh, being killed right there in the darkness of the night but he was a valiant man and the Lord himself called him a uh, valiant man because the Lord saw that in this action of Gideon there was something spiritual, something prophetic and today in our days bring us a, a wonderful teaching that shows us the worth, giving worth to the spiritual things that go way beyond the human logic my brother and sister if you and I would see rationally we would be here a few of us would be in this place do you think so? What is this place, humanly speaking, that could attract us? We're asking the question, and uh, geographically speaking, materially speaking, and speaking of like uh, architecture, geographically lo localization. What attracts us here? It's a simple building was was worked on with with care and love, but it's so simple. And there's nothing here that would, humanly speaking, attract us, but there was something that attracted us. The grapes that were pressed, the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus attracted us here. We decided to come here then to be in the, the threshing floor. We need to we decided to be on the place where the the grapes are, the, are stomped. We decided not to be in a place where people said, oh, let, let's reinterpret the Bible in a way that it pleases you. That's the weed worked on on the threshing floor. It smells like dirt, and it smells like the earth, and it's not going to take you to eternity. But if you go to the presence of a God that sent His only begotten Son to die on the cross of Calvary to give us salvation, this has the smell of wine, it has the smell of joy, it has the smell of life, the smell of eternity, as the taste of eternity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The church is—is uh, is the church understanding what I'm saying? Is Amen? Is it? Wine speaks of the joy, and Lega, uh, um, wine press speaks of the joy. We are here because we are happy because the Lord was here already waiting for us. We are happy because we love each other, with all our differences. We love each other. We forgive each other. We help one another. We pray for one another. Last month we have a wonderful experience. The cure of a servant that had lost five liters of blood in a hemorrhage that the doctors uh, to this day have not 
uh, understood what happened. She felt a pain. She had done a CAT scan in the morning because of the pain. The CAT scan didn't show anything. When she came at the end of the, the, the night, she, she fainted at 11 uh, o'clock p.m. And she went to the hospital and she was operated. The surgeon said, after the operation, he said, I didn't imagine that we're going to be talking right now. This is the Lord that we serve. Who knows the God that I serve? Is the God of this lady. She's part of this church. She trusted in the Lord. She gave her, her life to the Lord. And she said, Lord, I'm going to the wine press because on the uh, threshing floor there is death. The, the enemy is trying to steal it. The family began to pray. The church interceded. Everything said it was going to be the end of that person. But the Lord it was the desire of the Lord to give her life. So that today she could uh, share this experience. Uh, this experience is being shared throughout the world, all the churches. We sent this message so the presbytery could use this experience and share how many great things the Lord has done in the church of Pompano Beach for the honor and glory of His name. Where well, there is a people that is working the weight on a uh, uh, wine press, there is, there is life. You, men and women, the Lord is calling you valid men and women because you chose not to eat the, the weed worked on the, on the threshing floor, but you decided to go to the wine press. The Lord told Gideon, I'm going to use you to save these people. The Lord is counting on you and I, Gideon. The Lord has called us to do this because you and I, we're going to go through places that nobody's going to go through. Nobody has this word. Nobody has this weed. We're going to go through places where we're going to be sent to. Whether it's on traffic, at work, at school, in our neighborhood. And when it comes to your time, are you going to the threshing floor or to the wine press? Run to the wine press and tell how many great things the Lord has done. Proclaim the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. Enter into the gap because you have been called. Gideon was called a valiant man. And the Lord said, through you, I will guarantee victory. And he, he tested the Lord. My brother, he tested. Lord, allow me to test. I'm going to put a, a wall at night. And if I go there, uh, the wall is wet and around the ground is everything is dry. The Lord, I will know that the Lord spoke. And then that's what God did. The wall was filled with water and around the ground was completely dry but then he said to the Lord Lord I want to do another test to be sure that the Lord is speaking to me and the victory will come you know that the Lord is not upset with it the Lord himself said test me and show that I'm God show that I'm and see that I'm a God of gods so then God I'm going to put the wall uh, once again out there I'm going to ask the Lord to um have the dew uh, around on the ground but the wool remained dry and the, the, the new they came and Gideon went there and all all the ground was humid was wet but the wool was dry and he said blessed be the Lord because he answered my cry and answered my plea my brethren in this acts of or Gideon, it was another prophetic message because it was representing the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. The life was concentrated in Him. He was life, and life is light. He is the life, of, light of the world. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the verb that, that became flesh. He is the wall that was wet, and every, uh, everything around was dry. There was darkness uh, in the abyss. But the Lord Jesus has been sent, the only Son. He came, became man came born out of a woman and he gave himself he gave his life to save us that's why on the second day though the wall was dry and around everything was wet because when Jesus went to cover it he, he all his life was uh, was drained from him so we would all have life so as you sacrifice of the Lord Jesus so then the Lord asked Gideon to um, gather an army and he called, told and God, Gideon called an army, 30, 32,000 men 
it's going to produce sufficient uh, army. The Midianites are a, a larger number of them soldiers. But Gideon said, Gideon, there are too many people with you. I'm going to ask you to make a selection. Ask who is tired, who is discouraged, who is going to go to the war to think about these things, with human pleasures, who is afraid. Say, and Gideon said, my brother, just the, the the message uh, given generated a fall of 22,000 men. 22,000 men said, look, I'm, I'm tired, I'm, a, I'm concerned, I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to work, I'd rather stay home. 22,000 men, they were left behind. And the Lord kept saying, there is too, too many people with you, make another selection. Take these people to the shore of the river to drink water, and I'm going to show you who is going to go with you. My brethren, when they went to the water, a great number of uh, those 10,000 souls that were left, 9,700, went to the waters without looking around, without paying attention to and they were not alert, they were completely distracted and went into the water and drank the water. And only 300 paid, uh, did something that called the attention of God, and God chose them. They went to uh, the hand to the water. They were paying attention, looking around. They took the water with their hand and brought the water to their mouth. And God told them, you see this small number that did this? They are the, your souls. Can you imagine? Did Gideon thinking? 300 men. Gideon, the Midianites are many. So the Lord told Gideon, don't worry, I'll give you the victory. And the Lord revealed Gideon, the strategy of war, my brother, is completely contrary to any instruction of uh, army. Or there's no war strategy in, on the face of the earth that compared to the strategy that God gave to Gideon. God told Gideon, you're dividing in three groups of 100. You will surround the camp, the Midianite camp, you get, uh, you bring a empty vessel, a torch, and a horn, and and Gideon asked, Lord, how about the swords, the the shields, the spears? No, no, he said, no, only the empty vessel, the, the torch, and a horn. Though so Gideon said, the one hundred goes to one side, the other one hundred to the other. So Gideon decided to go and. Uh, go look out for these people and came uh, and came to close to a tent of one of the Midianites when he came close to this tent one Midianite was speaking to, a, to the other he was saying I uh, have a, had a dream I had a dream that a great uh, bread it was, it was a large br bread came and would hit us and killed every one of us and when Gideon heard that he said, the Lord is with me. The victory is guaranteed. Let's be the name of the Lord. The Midianites didn't understand anything. The only thing that they understood that that they were destroyed. That man, they had the dream. And the other that heard the dream, one thing they were sure, that we're, they were finished. If this dream is fulfilled, we're going to be killed by bread. And the bread, bread that was baked. The revelation was there. It was not a, a dream of... Uh, uh, belly that was too full was uh, a dream to show that only God is uh, is the Lord is God and Gideon and this bread was uh, with Gideon this is Jesus the living God as it is baked because the fire of the spirit is with him was it was baked because upon him it was that the dove because upon him is a revelation life with him is salvation and whatever he is the enemy is destroyed and victory is guaranteed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And now Gideon has no, is not afraid, even though he was only with 300 men. And now on the attack, he said, gave the order, shout, break the vessel, the torch will be inside. They raise the torch and blow the, the horn. Simple instructions. For you and I, the Holy Spirit will never give an order that you and I could not do. This is the wonder of the Lord that we serve. He gave us instructions that we can uh, fulfill. 
The obedience is the key of our victory. It's the key of our success in our spiritual life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And if we will obey, we only need to take possession of our victories. And then the moment came, the moment of the attack, they blew the horn, they broke the vessel and rose the torch. The Midianite army, they awoke and they saw all around them, they were, they were filled with soldiers in their minds, or there were many more soldiers than theirs. But they were only on 300 because that was the sufficient number the Lord has told them. And they shouted, the sword of the Lord is given. Father and Son and Spirit was represented there. The, word is the, the sword was a guarantee of victory. The reward is trying to call you as a coward, but you came from the Lord. That you, you, you came here to hear from the Lord that you are a valiant soul, man and woman. The word is trying to discourage you and steal your food, but in Jesus, your revelation is given. In Jesus, you go where the, the grape is pressed and the and where the res resurrection of Jesus is, has given it the proper worth. We understand this because that's why we're here. We're a small group. There's a lot of similarity with us and the army of Gideon. We're a small group. We're a simple church. But amongst us, there is the presence of the Holy Spirit. The torch is in our hands. Our hearts is empty. Take, let, bring vessels empty. We need to be empty of our own self, of our means, of we can never imagine that we have something in us. We need to be empty of ourselves so that the glory of God may shine upon us. And when you are broken, besides being empty, we need, we need to allow ourselves to be broken. You should allow the, the Lord to build us again. And, the perfect, and then praise the Lord, pressing the, the horn, uh, blowing the horn. is praising the Lord. The harvest is, is at hand. At any moment, we're going to hear the sound of the last trumpet, and our names are going to be called. Called, may God bless you. That you and I may give worth to all these emblems that have been mentioned, according to what the Lord has already shown tonight, so that you and I may have and give worth to this work because it is our ark, and it is represented Father and Son and Holy Spirit. My sister and brother, what happened to you and I in our walk is the result. It's the result. Of you and uh, of how you and I see this this work, and we have the zeal, we give worth, and we give and we embrace, we preserve this this work of the Lord, and hear the voice of the Lord. May God bless us. Let us hear a song. God, wonderful, all the honor and glory be given to you. The victory with you is certain, Lord. Best be the name of the Lord. Put your necessity in the presence of the Lord. Once the enemy is attacking, place everything in the altar of the Lord. Go into the wine press tonight. Our Lord can do all things. He guarantees us victory. Even if we have a, a small number, humanly speaking, the victory is ours by through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah.
moment in which Jesus was being crucified, uh, a, a few disciples were saying, Who is going to sit on your right or on your left side? Jesus answered, You don't have the means to drink from my cup. You're worried of a position in heaven. My brother, this is something natural of ours. I mentioned this pleading for the power of the, the blood of the Lord in our hearts so that it may never be the desire of us to be honored in this earth because if we suffer here, we'll, we'll be honored in heaven and crowned in eternity. In the moment in Gideon does the test with the wall, a wet wall, uh, the wall when was completely filled with water, it would fill an entire cup. You and I don't have the means to drink this cup. The death of Jesus was for you and I, but we don't ha we didn't have the means to do this. But Gideon, in the story of Gideon, the so I mentioned the book of Judges, has a great lesson to show that those God counts on those that feel weak. When the Lord called Gideon oh, a valiant man, Lord be with you. Lord, have mercy on me. Who am I? Who am I for you to call me a valiant man? But in, in truth, the worth that the Lord saw in Gideon was not the worth of Gideon, but was the worth of God in Gideon. In Gideon, there was a desire to preserve his people, and that's how the Lord wants us to be. He wants us to preserve one another. He wants us to love one another. So that he may see Jesus in us and he may see worth in us and he may see fulfilled in us his desire for eternity. To fill the cup, he filled the cup. The liquid was on the wall. It is the cup speaking of the destiny of Jesus that he had to die in order to give us salvation. You and I, who are, who are we to have um, to be have the means to drink up this cup? But today because Jesus went to, cross, to the cross we can glorify his name and this song that we are singing is God El Shaddai we're going to continue to sing this song to show to the world and to everyone that hears us and to, sell, to say to our, ourselves the, 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 this God is a God of the impossible if in this army, this huge army with only 300 soldiers was impossible and the Lord allowed to show that he was the God of victory, blessed be the name of the Lord believe, believe the Lord is powerful to operate, victory in your life in your home, in your family, at work, whatever you, you needed, count on the Lord. Let's sing the song standing up.
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's be named the Lord. Now we're, we're going to have a word of glorification to the name of the Lord who is present among, among us. Lord, how wonderful it is to receive your, this message, Lord. We glorify for everything that we have done to our lives. Amen. Your servant also can pray. We praise the Lord. Because it's wonderful to serve this God. This God provider. This God that truly has allowed us to walk over the waters with Him. We thank you, Lord, because another day we are in your house. But once again, you spoke to our people. We thank you, Lord, for your love that has been able to reach us every day. For your love that is unconditional. We, we are not, we're not deserving, Lord. But you are the one who loved us first. You are the one who found us and brought us to your presence. You are the one, Lord has truly placed our feet in, in the rock. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord, for everything you have done. We know that we are going to do much more amongst us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Receive our service, Lord. Our simple adoration, Lord. We know that we are going to depart to be with you in your glory. Your blessing uh, bless us, give us Remain with us, giving us peace and security in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. This month is the month in which we celebrate the Protestant uh, Reformation. And this is the month in which the church celebrates another year of existence, another year in which the Lord has been with us. So until the end of this month, we're going to dedicate something to the Lord. What can we dedicate to the Lord if He's the owner of everything? The gold and silver, the Lord of Lords and doctors of doctors. But what He wants from us, what He Gideon offered Him, dedication, His our lives. That's why the gifts were mentioned. That's why we sp they spoke of uh, the ark and and that, that we are, have our lives prepared for the coming of the Lord Jesus. This week we ended the period of uh, early dawns. And next week we're going to pray. Uh, we ask that the Lord reveal to us what He wants from us. We're going to offer this to the Lord. And the third week we're going to pray on doing at noon. And then we're going to work 24 hours. Seek the Lord and experience for your dedication to Him. Of your way to dedicate to Him. To this work that has been everything for us. May the Lord bless the whole church. Amen. Now we're going to have a, a meeting with Group B for the assist, uh, for after the assistance.